see you guys. Thanks for uh, being here on the Tuesday and the continual uh, support and, and, uh, of our student athletes and reporting and, and uh, covering them and, and their journey here at Mizzou over the next you know, three, four, five years, however long they're here, and, and uh, giving the story to, to the outside world uh, about our team and, and our players, our student athletes, our staff. I, I appreciate the work that you do and hope you had a great Labor Day. Um, getting through the film of, of week one, you know, there was a lot of things that throughout the course of the game that you were hoping matched up once you got through the video, and, and for the most part it did. Um, played a number of guys uh, that, that really first time experience, which was good to see them in live action. And then there were some guys that, that you had seen things up to that week uh, in, in practice situations that you wanted to see carry over to live work, and, and it did. And also knowing that and we've got a lot of room for improvement in, in all areas, um, but I'm, I'm excited about uh, some of the things that some of our newcomers did. I'm excited about the, the process of, of playing clean football on both sides of the, of the ball, uh, come away with plus one in the turnover margin, you know, with 82 snaps on offense, and, and to not have a, a turnover that's, that's a good mark uh, to build on, and then defensively, you know, we came away with one, need to find a way to be a little bit more creative and, and get the ball out uh, in the number of snaps that we had. But you also look at the third down percentage uh, on that side of the ball, and, and uh, we were at a high rate there. So all in all, you know, a good, a good first win for us. The preparation that, that started uh, against our next opponent uh, started pretty quick on, on uh, Saturday night, and uh, two really good days, the last two days, on, on getting uh, the game plan of Wyoming in and then first practice today out with our guys um, you know, and well into having an opportunity to, to build the defense and the offense on what will give us a chance to, to have success this week. So I know that, that Coach Bowl will have those guys ready to play. Uh, we've got a lot of respect for he and the things that he's done over his career. We were able to visit some this summer at one of the camps we were at together working the camp and uh, he was excited to come back and bring his team to Mizzou. Uh, he's played in this stadium a number of times when uh, Mizzou and another school were in the same conference. So uh, he's excited to make a return trip and uh, got a lot of respect for the job that he does. Barry, just what stands out to you about Wyoming on defense? I know they led the nation in turnover margin last year and they get a couple guys back from that team. If you look at, at the way they play defensively, their, their assignment sound, uh, they play with a lot of confidence in each other. They've got you know, most everybody back from last year's team that, that nationally look at the categories defensively. And they show up a lot in top 15, uh, top 10 in a number of categories. Um, you know, they, they had opportunities last week uh, against Washington State to uh, finish the game off and, and then it took a turn uh, you know, in, in Washington State's favor in the fourth quarter. Uh, but they're, they're an aggressive team, they're assignment sound, they tackle really well, they're, they're uh, aggressive in their coverages, but also understand um, where, uh, where they need to be every snap. I mean, you don't see a lot of guys, you don't see guys running uncovered, you don't see missed assignments, they're coached very well and, and, and they've got good players. Mary Drew had said that uh, you all are having the uh, scout team linebackers kind of jump a little bit early uh, on the snaps by design during practice. Well, what does that kind of allow you to mimic in Wyoming's defense? Well, there's times, not just Wyoming's defense, but there's times that throughout the course of the game, either defensively or offensively, you work on certain situations, and that would be one. You know, if, if, if we are able to draw someone off sides when we're on offense, so we've got a couple different ways that we react to that, and, and depending on what play call we have. So we've got to get that, um, you know, the defense guys, they, they've been trained not to jump off sides because we do up downs. So now we're coaching them to jump off sides to help the offense out. They're as confused as I am out there on that. But uh, it's all to get those guys, you know, if we get that situation on game day for them offensively to be able to react the way that they need to within the call that we have on, on how we're playing it out from there. Hey, what's the latest time we shot Floyd? Is he still on pace to be able to play in a week or two or so? Yeah, I, I sure hope so. I mean, he's got, you know, now he's just got uh, like an air, air splint on, uh, you know, going from a, uh, a boot from crutches to a boot to air splint. You know, this is the process of getting him ready to go. I know that uh, when he's not in, in the academic world of being a student athlete, he's over with Rex and doing all that he can there. Um, I think we're still on track, and, and now the next step will get him in 
you know, out and running straight ahead, and then you go from that to changing direction stuff. So he's done a great job on trying to be deliberate with getting back, and uh, hopefully we'll get him back soon. Especially because of the red shirt rule. I mean, have you ever been part of a game where you played that many guys as you did on Saturday? Yeah, you know, we um, wanted to get to that point last year, Gabe, against um, Idaho, but but didn't get there because of the rule. Uh, so no, we 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 played about everybody uh, pretty close to it that we could the other day. And uh, you know, there, there's a couple of those guys though that like Jarvis Ware is going to be one guy, for example, and. I hate to see a lot of guys, but the things that I've seen him do over the course of the last two weeks, um, he's going to end up being in a position, I think, to keep on pressing, and that's going to be one that we're not going to worry about four games. I think he's got a chance to help us in a lot of different roles um, because of his length, his speed, um, and, and his confidence and his understanding of football IQ of understanding what we're asking him to do. Um, but it was good to get those guys in and get them in early. You know, there were, there were, we wanted to come out offensively in the second half and have one drive at once and see how that ended up and then and then kind of wholesale change it and get everybody else in there. Um, we were able to do that. So it was a good experience for them. Also a learning experience for you know how many steps they need to continue to take forward to be able to play winning football. Were you satisfied with the amount of pressure that the defensive line created on Saturday and what can they continue to do to improve? Within the calls that we had, um, yeah, I was I was okay with the pressure they provided uh, because of, of what the what the play call was. Um, you know, we were about as basic as, as we could get. You want to be able to win some one on one matchups, you know, as well. But I think the quarterback at times felt some pressure. We were also um, you know, pretty direct on on what we did or didn't call there when we got in the middle of the second quarter. On. Barry, when, when as a staff, when you guys decided to, to kind of reinvest in Texas for recruiting, just how important was that when you went after a guy like Cam Scott and Jalen Knox, fairly highly recruited kids? I think you look at the history of Mizzou and the Texas connection with the high school kids that we've been able to recruit out of there. Um, and then you look at our alumni base you know, in St. Louis, Kansas City, and I think number three for Mizzou is, is Dallas. Uh, so those familiar faces and territory in that state that play great football, you know, it's year-round as it is in most states now. Um, and the connections that we have in our current staff with high school coaches and the different areas that, that maybe the schools that we've been before as a staff that they recruited in their home base in, in Texas. So all those things have, have aligned for us. And also I know that the type of kid that we've been able to get out of there um, we've had some really good players, and I think that trend's going to continue. Another Texas guy, Terry Petrie, got a lot of time on Saturday. What have you seen out of him, and especially his growth during the redshirt year? He said, you know, he probably grew up a lot in that year. He has matured a lot. Just, just, um, just the mental part of being able to prepare. I mean, in, in you know. For him, because he does have a, a, a really high-level skill set, um, he were, was not challenged much maybe senior year and could get away with some of the lack of, of just because fundamentally um, he was better than who he was going against most of the time. But he does have exceptional change of direction and, and sport or short short area quickness and speed. Um, he understands now. You know, every time he can't go take a shot, he's got he's got to play within the within the call within the scheme. But he's grown up uh, in the classroom. He's grown up socially. He's grown up in the weight room, which he didn't know what a, you know weight was really when he got here. Uh, so some of those things, and you see that over the course of, of guys when that when that kind of light bulb clicks and goes off, and and uh, he's got a lot of really good ball ahead of him because he, he can be a good player for us. Coach, it was a big weekend across the conference. I think 13 and one, two top 10 wins, and the only loss was to a top 20 team. Have you gotten a chance to uh, watch any of the, the games, keep up with the scores? Is there anything about the, the conference that stands out to you so far? Well, the, the thing I look at within our conference, and I know from, from top to bottom, it's uh, the best league in, in college football. Um, and I know that the thing that, that I took away and looked at, I looked at the turnover margin on how our conference turned out, because I use those things with our team. 
Uh, you know, it was a little bit unique this week with some of, of those throughout the uh, throughout our league. Uh, but as far as sitting there and watching the game, we, we I, I got on Wyoming. Uh, I don't know, probably nine o'clock Saturday night. I guess I didn't really watch other ball this weekend. I mean, I, I checked the scores uh, to see how people and friends in the business did. But as far as as really evaluating what our league did or any other team besides our next opponent, I didn't, I didn't spend much time on. Very, uh, <clears throat> I think it was already mentioned that you know Wyoming kind of thrived on creating turnovers last season. I know uh, there's possibility for some rain in the forecast on Saturday. Do you all do anything special to kind of work with the offense on ball security during wet conditions? Well, we, we always talk about ball security. We, um, in you know, in the last couple of weeks, we've, on a Thursday of each last Thursday, we've done wet ball drills out on practice, on the practice field. So we, you know, we dunk the ball in a five gallon bucket of water and, and then you gotta handle it. So, um, is that is that perfect? No, no. I mean, it, it at least puts an emphasis on it, and you also have to understand that throughout the course of the game, when you maybe are not feeling your best, and you're a little bit winded, and you're tired. You know, the the, the importance of securing the ball, uh, the focus that that takes. Um, you know, it's got to be something that rain, snow, sleet, or shine. We've got to make sure we protect that thing. How important is that? Fridays for you guys in terms of the things you do, uh, walkthroughs and, and preparing for the game on Saturday? I'd say, you know, mentally, uh, they're, they're all important days, but, but Friday for us, the focus that, that we're looking for in our 20 minute walkthrough and then our substitution review and then the, the habits that we have once we get to the hotel on the film study, the unit meetings that we have, um, you, you know real quick if, if your team's locked in and ready to go or, or maybe that needs to be addressed and uh, you know one weekend shows the sign of our maturity of our team right now and the approach that they took in the last 48 hours of the preparation and, and we understand that that gives us an advantage and then also you know, the challenge now that one's over let's do it again this week okay, your first game with jordan elliott eligible is what you see at a hand in the backfield he showed some things that that uh, tend for me to believe and think that he's got a chance of being a really good player this year for us. And um, you know, the limited work that, that he had, I thought he was active. Uh, I, I know at least one tackle for loss and control the line of scrimmage, but also he understands you know, the work that he needs to put in uh, against the competition that we've come, got coming uh, here the next, you know, next week and kind of on down the road. Barry, how happy with the Ryu with kick situations you got into this, this Saturday? I know you had your three field goals are all inside. 35 yards with you guys, Sean Keating in there as well. Yeah, it was good. And I think, you know, more than anything, the snap, uh, the hold by our holders, the protection, and then and then the guys making the kick. I mean, you know, last year we were upset about missing extra points, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep things. Uh, my coaching point from make it, you know, make it between the two uprights, you know, it's gone a little more directive now, which has helped those guys out. Um, and I, I think for those, that are involved in the kicking game. I thought that that was in our favor the other day. I think I thought our kickoffs were, you know, we had a, a stronger wind out of the south the other day, but our, our kickoffs were, were really good. And the times that we kicked into the wind, we had enough hang time that allowed us the, uh, the speed to get out of the field. Now, it's interesting to watch, you know, this with our game specifically on the kickoff rule, kickoff return rule now, we didn't get any fair catches that day, and I kind of thought we would going, going uh, the other direction against the wind. That was kind of what I was going to ask about watching games all over the country. There weren't that many guys fair catching. Do you think it's forced to happen? Or do you guys coach a specific, hey, if you're at this point, don't don't return it? We, we do. And there were, you know, um, times that, you know, last week we discussed as a staff on Thursday that, you know, the situation with football, as long as we're, we're on the same page on Thursday where we don't have to make those decisions, you know, we're, just, we're verifying those on Saturday. Uh, that, that was something we spent a lot of time on, um, on when to fair catch it, you know, what, what our thought process was. Um, I've got a guy checking right now to, to where we can discuss it this evening uh, on how many fair catches there were. Just you know, we're going to start in, in, in Power 5 and go from there uh, this past weekend. So it would be interesting to see kind of what everybody else's approach is. I shared ideas with guys in the offseason once that rule passed, and, and everybody was, uh, it was kind of, you know, six one way, half a dozen other on, on everybody's opinion on it. Um, so I don't know, we, we were 
prepared the other day to, to take a couple fair catches uh, when we were, you know, had the wind in their face, but, but it didn't play out that way. Anything more for Coach? We have time for some more. Okay. Mayor, what why offensively they haven't thrown it all that well and got a freshman quarterback, but but they've had some success running the ball, which depresses their offense. Yeah, they, they want to run the ball. There's there's no uh, confusion about that. And I think they've got a couple good backs that, that have the ability to do that up front. The uh, schematically, you know, they're gonna they do a good job on working to the next level, double team and working to the next level. And this find a little crease and then all of a sudden you line up and it's second and four. You're getting six yards and then they'll go break one and um, it was a little bit more of a controlled passing game the other night uh, against Washington State for them, but, but also with that, they had a guy that was open and perfect deep ball, uh, and he didn't end up making the catch. So the quarterback's got some skill. Uh, he looks like, to me, he's good on the move, throwing the ball. Uh, the delay play action game has been good for him. Um, you know, they, they do just enough to keep you off balance, and then if, if for any second that you relax just a little bit, They've got two guys on the outside that can get behind you pretty quickly. So uh, we need to be assignment sound. We need to be uh, dialed in. Number one, we've got to stop the run. But then we've got to make sure we've got our eyes in the right spot to take care of the business on the back end. Coach, you're, you're four and seven in nine games. Is there, any, is there anything to that? Are you doing anything different preparation-wise this year? Let's we'll see if we can change it to a day game. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that stat. But uh, now we're going to approach it just like you know, the other day, our, our home or away or neutral site, we got to the process of the last half of last year and then starting this game this year that, that our Thursday practice is exactly the same, same time, same everything. Friday, you know, exactly the same script. We're going to get to the hotel at the same time. And then our Saturdays, if it is a night game like this week, uh, we'll do a little bit more with our kids uh, meeting-wise and then balance it out. You know, you, you, you want to be around 24-7, but you can't. And then, you know, they need to get off their feet a little bit too. So there's a good balance there. And every team's a little bit different. So we'll see how we handle this one. I know some games are scheduled 12 years out, so I don't know when this series was set up, if it was before you were here or not. But the return game next year at Wyoming, I, it's fairly rare for a Power 5 team to go on the road and, and play a game like that, is it? And, you know, what are your feelings or general philosophy on doing that. Yeah, I'd like to play 12 home games and uh, <laughs> see if we could get that worked out. I don't know when the game was set either um, on, on this series. Uh, I, I did hear um, Coach Mike Leach's comments on altitude and uh, or, or lack of it. It's interesting uh, on, on his beliefs in that. So if you haven't heard that, check that out. Um, I know I'll mess it up if I try to say exactly what he did. Um, but if you look at, you know, I'd like to play, um, I'd like to play them all here. I'd like to play them all in the state of Missouri. But you also know what um, the schedule is for the eight conference games that we've got. And then creatively enough, you want to make sure that at any time that you got an opportunity to play seven at home and then how you make that work around that. Now with the rules that you've got to have a power five opponent in there, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to find the right fit to be perfect um, for, for, for your team, for your student athlete experience, for your fan base, and then the location and making sure it all works out. So I know Jim and, and Nick Joes have, have done a good job on, on reaching out for, for way down the road on, on setting some things up schedule wise and, and um, you know, at some point, I'll get to say, yeah, that sounds good, or, or not. It's just the schedules are so far out, and, and Nick has, has communicated with me, you know, every every time something comes up about what, what your thoughts on these, and sometimes you've got three or four opponents that that you want to try to make it work, and, and then they can't make it with their conference date-wise, so a lot of moving parts to try to fit it all together. Coach, you talked a little bit earlier about the defense being able to, you, you want the defense to be a little bit more creative um, going into this next week. Uh, is that more play scheme or being able to adjust the line of scrimmage? What's when, when did I say that you more, be more creative? Uh, so the, the, the things that we did the other day, we, we had that built in creativity, but we didn't end up having to get to it because of the score was where it was. Um, I think we've got a great scheme defensively. 
think Ryan and that side of the ball has, has built and put together um, enough creativity on third downs that if we need to get in that situation, we've got a lot of different sub packages that we can use. Um, but also, when when you're a really good defensive football team, you can line up in your base stuff and, and have some success on, on first, second, and even third down. And I want to see that continue because I think we've got the front seven uh, if we're if we're if we're playing right, then we've got we've got an opportunity to be a really good defensive football team. Okay, anything more? All right, coach, we'll let you go.